we are allowed content to be recovered. So it is essential that they hear everything. But if in case they're not, because they're sick or whatever the situations are, the policy of what constitutes an excused absence or unexcused absence is on your focus. So what you can do, review the policy, and if they were sick, they went to the doctor, they went to the lawyer, they went to a hospital, they went to immigration, whatever the case is, you could find if it's something that you can excuse, you could send that note to that email address, 7131 attendance at the school government. The mailbox will be reviewed every day from 7 to 9 to excuse the prior day absences. Last year it was a lot to review, and sometimes we were, you know, by the day because there was a lot of kids missing, but this year it is feasible. We're expecting that that gets reviewed a lot. Uh, make sure that once again they're here, but if they're not, that you submit the absence for excuse absence. For those of you that are interested in Bates course, all these coaches are here, and they know this, not because anything, but because it's a policy. If you have more than 10 unaccused absences and 20 toys and or, you cannot participate in extracurricular activities, you cannot play sports. That is a school board rule, and it's there on your folders in your hands. If you have more than 10 unaccused and 20 toys, you will not be able to participate in extracurricular activities. I will receive the future form, I review the names, check the attendance, and I will have unfortunately cause your name out and put deny participation 1020 rule. The coach is not by me, the activity director not by me. I'm not going to break policy that you know is in place. So again, 10, 10 on excuse and 20 toys, you will not be eligible to do extra curricular activities. Early pickup, you may need to come by one fixing. But the most important thing is pay attention to your child's headaches. Because it's a problem if they always have headaches at the end of the day when they have priority. You know? If the headache varies and it's on Wednesday, and then they can click on Friday, and then we have four, they could have headaches. You could bring in some Advil and let it stay with you and stay in class. But if it's every day you have biology, that's a problem. Yes, the headache is the problem we need to look at, but we need to look at what's happening that is always the biology absence. Because by the time you realize you already did biology in 10 days, and Mr. Merritt or Mr. Sean, who are your biology teachers, they're going to be coming to you. Oh, he's missed this class 10 days. What are we doing? Is behind already in the whole chapter. So, if they are asked to be released early because they have a medical condition, I want you to pay attention to the child. Is it always at the same time? Is it always the same teacher? Is it always on Fridays at 12? Always on Fridays at 12? That's not, that's not a headache. Bring two hours, give it to them in the office, and tell them, go back to class. I got to work. And they'll be okay in class. All right? So, follow those targets because you don't want them to accrue unexcused absences, unexcused absences in particular class of one. And again, if you have to be absent, we understand. We all have emergencies, we all have medical issues, we all have problems. Also, if your child has, on the call, the braces, don't schedule every brace at one minute at 10 o'clock. You know, he's in school. Talk to your doctor to do 245. Talk to your doctor to do 4 o'clock. At 10 o'clock in the morning, he lost the entire school day. We're not bringing him at 7 to pick him up at 9. And you're not bringing him at 11 to pick him up at 2. So he lost the school day for scheduling the appointment at 10. So do it at 2. Maybe he misses, he misses the last block. But in the middle of the day, that would be. I know doctors are a little difficult sometimes. But you pay a premium and you pay a copay, so be a little more safe. So now I have to Okay? So, um, but I'm going to really quick. And I have that video. Asistencia is a victoria. They need a necessity to have a new one. And see if Jenny can have a center for a good motivo. Uh, for
pueden mandar la justificación a este correo electrónico y lo tienen ahí en el PowerPoint. Todas lo que es la, uh, la, las reglas de asistencia del distrito están puestas también en el folio que ustedes recibieron, que constituye una asistencia justificada o no justificada y qué ronda tienen que mandar para cada asistencia. Por favor, no recojan el niño siempre a la hora de la tarde cuando tiene biología en el último periodo. Eso no es todo de cabeza, eso es, yo no quiero ir a los días, ¿verdad? Y después, cuando pases cinco veces, ya tienes diez ausencias en el origen. Y el maestro, a las diez ausencias, puede decir, no crédito, tú no tienes crédito en la clase porque tienes diez ausencias en el so, Cuando él pide que lo lleve a entrar a la casa, se sigue el patrón de la asistencia y dice, ¿qué tal que tiene hoy? Yo lo digo, ¿y hoy? No me llama ¿Y hoy? No, bueno, lo soy. Ok. O sea que eh, no anda bien para todo. Eh, el cual que tienen que ver ya recogerlo antes de las 9 y 50, así que 30 minutos antes de final del día para que eso también que tengo otra regla para todos los días. Ok, eh, si usted viene a las 9 y 55 y el security del front desk te dice que no puede recoger a luna, por favor, el security está haciendo lo que yo le mandé a hacer. Él está siguiendo las reglas que yo, el distrito pusieron, que era las 9 y 50. No es que él quiera hacer el pesado, él quiera hacer la regla dice 30 minutos antes de todo. Ok. Uh, now, I'm going to call on this one more really quick to talk about a little bit of um, graduation requirements. Uh, this is a very uh, important uh, slide, and I want you to pay attention because I said before we had a 100% graduation rate. It didn't begin in 12th grade. The kids didn't begin working to graduate in 12th grade that would be possible. They began in ninth grade with the agile text. They followed in 10th grade with the PLA. Then they followed in junior with the FLBS or the community service project. Every year, you need to attend and turn one of those milestones to make sure you graduate. It's impossible to try to attain all six senior year unless you're Einstein or Einstein or some, some philosopher like that. Because you will have a GPA 2.0, 24 credits, community services, ELA 10th grade, whatever you school, and have your own time. Look how many things you can do them all in 12th grade. You need to start early and do one at a time. But do them all one at a time. You'll be able to target them. And I just want to clarify real quick here the GPA 2.0 required to graduate, but also required to play any sports and to do any extracurricular activities. You could be star quarterback, star softball player, star volleyball player. If you don't have a two point I need to put again on that future form, deny GPA requirement. You sit down, you start quarterback. You see, it's not doing well, think about it. Remember that you are student athletes. So you need to make sure that you are ready to graduate and be a student before you're an athlete. You're not called active students. The student athletes, the academics come first, and having the academics gives you the pleasure or the opportunity or, 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 or the possibility to do athletics. Okay? I don't want you to deviate the goal of getting a diploma. The diploma is given on academics. The star quarterback doesn't have those things. He can play college because he can't graduate high school. Okay? So here's Ms. Holland, the 10th grade category. Okay, good evening. You got a little bit a taste of high school for ninth grade. So now I'm just gonna briefly go over what you need to focus on for the rest of your high school years. I always tell the students there's five things that you need to focus on for high school to graduate high school. Your GPA, which we already explained in the 2.0, your 24 credits, those 24 credits consist of four English, four math, three science, three social studies, and then your elective classes that you need to have to make up 24 credits. There are specific math courses, science courses, social studies courses, but all in all you need four English, four math, three science, three social studies, and then your elective courses. So we have one thing you need to focus, GPA, 
your 24th grade. Your community service hours. You need community service to graduate. Not, oh, no, I might do it. No, you must have community service in order to graduate. Fourth thing, you need your FSA scores, your exam. You have EOC exam, which are listed here. And you also have the FSA ELA that you'll be taking this year if you are sophomore um, now. And then finally, you have the FLBS credit. That means you must take at least one online course in your high school year, okay? And that'll come whether it's this year, whether it's next year, but you have to have a Florida virtual credit. I also tell my students it's not about what grade you're in, because you'll see someone say, oh, what did it switch over to 10th grade? It's more about what, to making sure you're getting your credits and making sure you have that GPA. You need to focus on those five things. Because you may, let's say, for example, if you look in ninth grade, you might have missed an English course or didn't pass an English course. And it'll say you're in 10th grade, and you're like, yes. It's not like middle school, they move you on. You still have to make up that English course. So it's not about what grade you're in. It's about receiving those credits. So you will have to make up that credit, whether it's online or what we have is adult ed. You will have to go to adult ed. You don't want to be in that predicament because you're in school from 720 to 220. And then afterwards, you have to leave and go and make up that credit from 3 to 6 p.m. So that's a very long day. So it's all about getting those credits and doing all your five things that you need to graduate. You have to start now. You cannot wait until 11th and 12th grade because you will miss out. And this just goes into the specifics, uh, which is all in your folder. The specifics of the courses that you need, the, the math course, the English courses, the math courses, which has to include algebra and geometry, the science courses, which has to include bi um, biology, world history, American history, American government and economics, those are your social studies courses, then you have your fine arts credits, your physical education, and then your other electives, which will also include your virtual course. So this just gives you a breakdown of how to get those 24 credits. Scholar designation. Excellent designation. Hopefully you guys did well with your freshman year and you're in track. Again, this will help you in the future, which leads right into our bright future, which Ms. Hahn is going to speak to you about. That is money in your pocket. Go ahead, go <laughs> okay, yes, yeah, so scholar designation. Just you're starting start now. We're focusing if you're um, uh, anticipating going into colleges or universities, you need to start now. We're making sure you're getting everything that you need to get into those colleges and universities. And with that being said, I kind of want to backtrack. Foreign language, as you notice, was not on there as being a graduation requirement. It's not a graduation requirement. However, if you plan on going to a college or university, you must have two years of foreign language. The same language, Spanish 1, Spanish 2, French 1, French 2. Whatever the language is, you must have two to get into those universities. So I know you didn't see foreign language there, but keep that in mind and we'll, trust me, you'll hear it from us all the time. You need it to get into a university, okay? And like you mentioned, the Bright, Stop, Bright Future Scholarship, free money, I call it free money. And the way you get the free money is your GPA, your community service dollars, your certain SAT, ACT test scores, there are requirements. You will receive, um, and it'll also be on our website, and it'll be able to tell you the different designations you have. They can pay 100% tuition, 75% tuition, but it falls on you. It falls on what was your GPA, what SAT and SAT test scores you uh, had. What community service hours, how many community service hours you did. You may only have a minimum, let's say, I don't know, maybe 20 community service hours here to graduate, but in order to get 
You have to start now. There is no waiting until your junior and senior year because you won't be able to make it. You have to start now. Again, Mr. Ramirez here. Uh, we do offer a lot of rigorous courses here at HML. Okay, take advantage of that. Our advanced academics are second to none. Our students will take on campus dual enrollment classes certified by FIU. Meaning, I don't put them on a bus and it's that bus they go to FIU, they take their course and they come back. No, they do it right here on campus. We've had students teaching the combination of advanced placement, dual enrollment, that have been able to graduate from high school with their AA, okay, that's over many courses taken of college that are going to go right to you because in college, unlike in high school, you have to pay for those credits. So take advantage of these advanced placement courses that we offer and the dual enrollment classes that we offer. There is a minimum in order to uh, a GPA minimum, and you have to take a per test, but we've got you all through that. Ms. Dominguez, who was here earlier, she was in one of the tables, she'll help you get through that process, get you registered through FIU, get you registered through Miami Dade, all right here on campus, without having any money come out of your pocket. So again, make sure you take advantage of that. We have a ton of magnet programs. There is something up there that you may or may not like. Okay, we're gonna give you that opportunity to examine that. You might get leadership and be like, oh, what's this JROTC leadership? There's actually scholarships that our students have gotten because they've been part of that program. Because having been part of that program, they qualify for different scholarships. So again, this is your high school. You take pride in it, you're going to get out of high school whatever you put into it. So again, those are some of the programs that we have here. Uh, you remember Ms. Holly, who's your counselor, the person that deals with some of that cap advisor and that bright future is Ms. Cruz. She will be coming into classes and telling you how you uh, schedule ACT, SAT. What are you doing to get your application ready for college? We are a comprehensive high school. Uh, Dr. Napoleon is going to speak about our athletics and our activities. Thank you, Mr. Ramirez. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Napoleon once again. And in reference to activities here at HML and um, clubs, parents, we have a lot of activities for the students. In order for the students to have a positive, um, an additional positive experience here at HML, they must participate in our clubs and activities. This school is for you students. We cannot have a fun, exciting school year without you being part of it. This is for you. We want you to take an opportunity and be part in the decision-making processes in reference to what we're offering as well. If you see that we have something, we don't have something that you're interested in doing, let us know. Because maybe there's a lot of other students who may be able to find you a sponsor to give you those activities. So um, as you see, we have a key club, we have a trust club, we have Maggie Ambassadors, we have the Police Explorer, we have the Drama Club, we have the 5,000 role models, and a lot of these other clubs, parents, also lead to scholarships. Um, athletics is not the only way to get scholarships. Academics is not the only way to get scholarships. Through these other clubs, students can also go to college and get additional resources and funding, such as you have the JROTC, um, where students can participate in different activities through them and um, receive scholarships as well. So please, make sure that you allow your children to participate because they need something else to do. And a lot of times when the kids are finished with their academics, if they don't have anything else to do, then that's when they become, um, they, they lose their path and they go in the direction that we, that we would prefer not for them. 
So please allow them to participate. In terms of athletics, HL offers almost all the sports that you can possibly think of. That's both for the young ladies and for the males. And as a matter of fact, we have a lot of the coaches are right here today. We have two still in the back. We have our um, we have our um, volleyball coaches here. We have our tennis coaches here. I believe the water polo coaches here. The um, um, baseball coaches here. The football coaches also here for you guys to see them. Please make sure you get the opportunity to speak with them. Start getting some of the requirements as to what you need in order for you to be a participant. But remember what Mr. Santoya said at the beginning. Student athletes, meaning you must have the 2.0. Because here at HML parents, our main priority and goal is getting your child graduated from high school with the hopes that if they want to go to college, they can go to college. If they want to go to a career path, they can go to a career path. If they want to become a superstar athlete, they can become a superstar athlete. We have great sports program here. Last year, we even had one of our young ladies who went all over the states and wrestling. Okay? So it's like we support it all. So please be sure to come out and represent your school. Parents, tips, Dr. Sosa. I 
need to have my child home. And that's okay. Um, you could use the email address that I just told you showed before. Send in the note. If you went to the doctor, send in the doctor's note. I will help you take care of that absence. Um, but it's really important that we're, you know, uh, careful so that we can protect everyone around us as well. Um, like Mr. Sassoyo mentioned, it's important to have an updated emergency contact form and an updated email address. Okay? Um, we do a lot of mail merch. You will get a lot of emails from us. You already get a lot of emails from us, right? Like, this isn't a surprise. So it's important that you have that. If you change it, let us know so we can update the record. Um, that's going to be the way that we're going to have to you know, send you plans as to the events that are going on. Mr. Santoyo will also send you progress reports for your child, their grades, the progress towards graduation, um, if there are any absences, all of that will be included in email. So it's really important that you have that um, update. And the emergency contact card, in the first day of school, first week of school, you will get one. So your child will take it home and you have to complete it. Every year, we ask for an updated contact card, and that's just a district policy to make sure that we have the most updated and current information. It's important that you put who's authorized to pick them up and who's not authorized to pick them up. And if we do not have a person, if, if Johnny comes to pick up your son, but Johnny's not in the, in, in the emergency contact card, I cannot release him because you have not authorized me to do that. So it's really important that we follow that protocol. I'm sure that you trust us to keep your child safe, and we will. So it's important that we just have all of those procedures on property in place. And I will harass you about this every single year, okay? So um, Of course, uh, the getting to know us, getting to know everyone that's in the building, right? Whether it's the administrators, myself, Mr. Ramirez, Mr. Santoyo, whether it's the counselors, the Coleman, Mr. Jones, whether it's the coaches, the teachers, it establish a relationship with them. You know, um, just reach out, send an email, um, call us, and, and let's all be on the same page. Because, like I said earlier, we are all in this together. And let's keep in mind that it has been a very difficult year for all of us, right? As parents, as students, as, as teachers, as humans, we have all just had a very difficult year. So it's important that we continuously focus on the positive, right? You know, try to get your child to um, acknowledge all the good things that they have done, acknowledge their effort, praise them, you know, let them know that they're loved. And, and the, on our end, in the school side, I promise you we're going to do the best to do that, to build a positive environment, to have activities, to have some fun, push them to increase the spirit. But it's, it's all in this together, right? That, that's the only way that we're going to move forward. Um, un poquito en español. Eh, lo primero que sugeriría a los papás es eh, buscar el fin de padres. En su folder tres direcciones para eh, hacer su cuenta en el portal de estudiantes, en el portal de padres, perdón. Y con el fin que nosotros le proveemos, usted puede ver sus grados, su asistencia y otra información. ¿Okay? Es importante que todos estemos en la misma página, por supuesto. A veces los niños dicen, no, pero ya entregué esa tarea. Los maestros dicen, no, no la entregó. Y bueno, es mejor estar en la misma página y saber cómo chequear el portal, chequear toda esa información para estar todos bien claros y poder comunicarnos bien ¿no? entre todos nosotros. Es importante que conozca a los maestros de su hijo, que conozca a los consejeros de la escuela, la administración, porque así todos nosotros eh, podemos hacer un equipo para ayudar a sus hijos a seguir adelante y a llevarlo a la graduación, lo cual es el propósito de nosotros. Eh, la asistencia, por supuesto, eh, y monitorear los síntomas de su hijo, si por alguna razón su hijo tiene fiebre, no se siente bien, tiene tos, Está bien que se quede en la casa, es importante en este momento que nosotros pensemos en la salud de todas las otras personas, ¿no? So, si tiene alguna necesidad de quedarse en casa por alguna razón, puede excusar las ausencias, como dijo el señor Santoyo, mandando un correo electrónico eh, a, a la cuenta que él mencionó anteriormente, que también está en su folder. 
Y lo más importante es saber que este año ha sido difícil para todos nosotros, como padres, como hijos, como estudiantes, como maestros. So, vamos a asegurarnos de empujar a nuestros niños a, a salir un poquitico, ¿no? A salir un poquitico de, de esa protección, a, a, a hacer un poco más en, en vueltos en, en todo lo que está sucediendo en la escuela, salir lo más posible en las clases, pero también darle, darle eh, apoyo, ¿no? Decirle, mira, estoy orgulloso de ti por tratar algo nuevo, estoy orgulloso de ti por estar en un club o estar en un deporte, pero vamos a, a poner el enfoque en la parte positiva para así todos salir de este año tan difícil que hemos tenido. Pero ustedes, junto con nosotros, sé que podemos tener un año eh, bien excitante. So, in your folders, you guys have the uniform policy that Mr. Santoyo went over. You have the current setup instructions. You have the attendance and target policy which is actually also going to be posted in all of your classrooms. And you have the progress report card, so you know when your child is expected to bring home a report card, okay, they cannot lie to you, you have it there, but they, you're expected to get one. And then a copy of this PowerPoint. We also added in there a copy of our Parent Teacher Student Association, so if you want to join that organization, you can as well, um, and support us. So, The, what that Parents, Title I is based on, um, it's a funding structure that's based on the lowest, lowest income. This is, this is determined by the number of students who's applying for free and reduced lunch. This provides schools with additional funding. So if you do qualify for free and reduced lunch, please apply for it. If it's something that you don't automatically receive, because as you apply for these uh, free and reduced lunch applications, you will qualify, your child will not only qualify for free and reduced lunch, but in addition to that, this year there is a technology fee for the mobile devices. So if your child needs a mobile device, how much that's gonna cost is gonna deter determine on your free and reduced Um, application status, which leads to a Title I funding. During our open house session, we will have a Title I session where you will complete the Title I compact, which gives the parent an opportunity to give more say as to what they would like to see happening in the school and in what direction they would like for it to go. But that is up to you for you to make those des decisions and changes. Thank you for your attendance. On behalf of Mr. Santoyo and the rest of the administrative team, we really want to thank you for coming out today. If you have any questions, feel free to let us know. We will be outside to see you. Um, we do have some of the coaches outside that's waiting to meet you as well. And we did have the apparels that was outside that we're selling. Once again, parents, we're looking forward to a great 2021-22 school year. Thank you very much. Monday is the first day of school, everyone. Be here bright and early, early enough for breakfast. Thank you. Paris, even though lunch is free for everyone this year, please make sure you complete those applications. That's how we get additional funding for the school and there's also additional resources for your kids.